fire. going on social media socialites <clears throat> we are live I am checking to see that I am live on my sound okay sound is good audio is good let's see I'm doing a little bit of checking guys give me a moment yeah there's not not a lot of whole bunch of karate chopping not a lot of karate karate chopping going on so guys, thank you so much for watching. I know it is late. I know it is super duper late, guys. So um, it's late. Listen, if y'all want me to do these, this is what it takes. Because guess what happens during the day? I run my business. <laughs> okay. So I work. This is this is me working. This is what I do. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's late. So I just got out of... Um, our one-on-one -on -one consultation, well not one-on-one, -on -one. so in our private Facebook group for all of my clients that's enrolled into DCFI online, we do live Q&As, and so I just was live with them for an hour, and um, today has been a very busy day, a productive day, but yet all in still a busy day, so I want to allow you guys comments to, to come on and get on the screen so that your comments can get on the screen. You guys already know what this is. Now, if this is your first time watching me and you don't know who I am, my name is E. Dean Cole and I own Dean Cole Financial. We're a consulting firm. We specialize in working capital, alternative finance, business credit development. That's what we do. That's who I am. Um, and you're watching this for the first time. Um, I need you to do a, do one thing. Okay, so first of all, this is who I am. My name is E. Dean Cole. Um, and also, I want you to make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe and hit the bell. So if, you, if you're watching this live and you was like, Dean, I didn't know you were live. How come I didn't know you were live? Two things. Thing number one, you've either seen one of my videos before and you did not subscribe. Or thing number two, you did subscribe, but you did not hit the notification bell. So you see this right here, you have to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified. Or thing number three, you just like, it's late because it's 11 o'clock my time, which means that it is like 12 o'clock um, on the East Coast. I saw somebody saying, Dean, it's late. I get up at five in the morning. Listen, I appreciate you for watching me. East Coast, 12 o'clock at night. Thank you for being a part of the notification squad. Thank you so much for supporting me. I speak a blessing over you and I declare that one day, you're not going to have to wake up at five in the morning to go to work, but you're going to get to wake up at five in the morning to run your business. I speak that over your life. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and make that um, speak that into flourishing for real. So that is Jim Trusso said that specifically. So Jim, I speak that blessing over you, Jim. And so, um, so Anthony was like, Dean, hurry up and get things cracking. 
No, Anthony, I want to take another 45 minutes. How are you going to tell me what I'm going to do when I am providing information to you? Come on, we're not going to start that. We ain't going to do that That entitled energy. We ain't doing that. I ain't got time for that. It's 12 o'clock at night. I'm tired. So we have 41 people that are watching and we only have 10 thumbs up. That's not how we're going to do this. So let's get the thumbs up to match. Well, we have 41 thumbs up and we have one thumbs down. So out of the 40 people that are watching that are supporters, I need all 40 of you guys to hit the thumbs up button right now. When you hit that thumbs up button, when our thumbs up match our um, match, when our thumbs up matches our um, views, then I'm going to go ahead and bring your comments on the screen so people can see your comments and you can see your comments as well. And so as the title of the video says, I'm going to be teaching um Three things. I'm not going to be long because I'm, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I actually was supposed to meet up and have dinner with a friend of mine, but um, I told her it's too late to be doing all that. It's been a long day. I ain't doing all that, but I'm just tired. I just had a very, 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 very draining and long day. But all in all, Jehovah God is a good God. I'm grateful to be so busy in my business. But so nevertheless, the title of the video is how to remove student loans from your credit report. Now, this is a live video, okay? This is a live video and a live lecture. So if you've never seen me before, it's very interactive, okay? So if you're like, hurry up and get to the point, two things, shut up, press fast forward, or remove yourself from the video, don't find the knowledge that you need, continue to live the life that you live, or be patient, and learn something. This is a lecture. This is not a cat video. You saw that this was live on the thumbnail. You saw how long it was. I'm going to try my hardest to do 45 minutes. A reason why I'm going to do 45 minutes at three points I want to share with you guys. But the reason why I'm going to try 45 minutes is because I need your participation on this. So um, that's that. All right. Now, let's go ahead and see who is all in the building um, and everybody that's participating now. You guys know I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I don't do this for play. I do this for pay. What do I mean by that? I own a consulting firm in real life. So this is what I do. This is my business. So even though I'm up late and you guys are watching me and I'm giving you great, phenomenal content, I still look at my analytics. I still make sure that I abide by certain guidelines. So we're about to get into that in a moment. So we have 32 people that are watching. I mean, we have 32 thumbs up. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay, 32 thumbs up. I, I can I can roll with that. I can I can roll with the 32 thumbs up. I, I can roll with that. All right. So we have your comments up on the screen. 32 thumbs up. I can roll with that. You know, we got some some um haters, or maybe not some people that are hating, maybe some people that are driving. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot of clients that are in the trucking industry, and you know, I can deal with that. Okay, we have 32 thumbs up now. All right, guys, so I'm about to get into this. I know this is a long intro, so hopefully um, I'm going to drop a um, thumbnail, not thumbnail, a table of contents so that you guys can get right into the meat and potatoes of things. So th first things first, um, if you currently have issues with student loans, okay, if you have issues with student loans, let's do a temperature check. Now, this is a live lecture and this is it's all based on you. So even though I am a CEO and even though I am an orator and a speaker, my content is derived around you. This video is specifically from one of my clients, Gertrude. She asked me a question um, and, it, and, and it sparked up a great conversation. Now, I'm giving away a free course on how to restore your credit, on how to repair your credit. That is a free course and it's actually being sponsored by a company that helps with student loans. The course is not out yet. Um, we had to re-record some things. So I know the course was supposed to be out last week, but two things happened. One, we had to re-record some things. And two, I was dealing with people that were trying to leech and trying to use my intellectual pro property for their profit. You know, there's these quote unquote credit gurus, they walking around with stains on their t-shirt. You know, they 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, talking about their credit guru. You ain't got no credit. What you talking about? You're 20 years old. You're 22 years old. What are, what are you saying? Like, you ain't got no credit. You hadn't had to repair anything. Like, what are you talking about? So a lot of these people, they come to me and they stay in my inbox. They go, oh, you the OG, man. You know, teach me how to do this, then the third, whoop de whoop de whoop. I have no problem teaching you if you're using it for your own 
benefit, not trying to hustle, not trying to come up on a on a jug, not trying to be the plug. Uh, -uh. Mm, that that really bothers me because I have 20 years of experience teaching in banking and finance. It really bothers me when someone claims to be a guru, same claims to be a credit repair expert, but yet they run into my course. They're running in my inbox so that I can train them and teach them. That is not the move. Now, maybe next year I might create a course to teach people how to do it, maybe, but I don't want to because I have, it's very, very few people that I've met and I'm not holier than thou. And I know this is a rant and you know what, if you don't like it, hit the thumbs down button and you can leave. But very few people that I have met that really are genuinely into this, they do it for the right purposes. Now, the reason why I teach credit repair is because, like I said, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I don't do this for play. I do it for uh, for pay. What do I mean by that? I am a business consultant. I make money when my clients get loans. So um, originally, I never really wanted to do anything with personal credit at all. I didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it at all. Like I hate personal credit. Not saying that I hate it. It's just that personal credit is a lot more difficult. I mean, you know, we know the ins and outs and outs and ends because we, my job is to get clients approved. It's business credit is easier. Business credit is better. And I want people to build their business credit that's separate from their personal credit. I, I am, if, if, if I have a client, if somebody wants to want to hire me for consulting. If you are working for somebody else, if you are a entrepreneur, if you are an assistant and that's great and that's fine. I'm not called. I don't believe that I'm called to the nurse that wants to work for the, the doctor, the best surgeon in the, in the world. I don't think that I'm called for her. I think I'm called to her or him that is a nurse that wants to own their own nursing business and teach them economic empowerment through entrepreneurship. So because of that, I would only teach personal credit when I necessarily had to, when somebody wanted to do a shortcut to get approved for loans or um, as a favor to a lot of our clients, because um, in our consulting um, program, um, before we did the online course, we had an in-office course and, and a lot of the clients, we focused on business credit, but a lot of them also wanted to need help with personal credit. We would do that for free. So we do it for free. Like even right now, if you enroll into my, my paid course, the startup coaching is actually a bundle where you get the personal credit for free um, because you're paying for the business credit. So I said all of that to say this. So what is the benefit for me as a business consultant? I want your credit to be higher because it makes it easier for you to get business credit, get business funding, and it's faster. Now, you can build business credit that's 100% separate from your personal credit. You can do it in roughly three to five months. However, if you do have good personal credit, you can do it in 30 to 45 days. So that's the benefit of me. That's why I'm gonna teach you. And, and quiet as it's kept, I get a lot of sponsors. Um, I get a lot of businesses that like to do business with me. So even though I don't have a million subscribers and even though um, I don't have 100,000 subscribers, because of you guys, because of my content, because of my professionalism and my expertise, and because of the engagement, my inbox stays flooded with people wanting to do business with us. So the individuals or the companies that I use in the free course, they pay for it. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that. It's the best of both worlds. So um, I said all of that to say that that's the reason why the two reasons why the course has been delayed is one, because I needed to re-record some information because some things changed with some of the lenders, some of the guidelines. I needed to make sure I was prepared for that. And thing number two is that I was trying to figure out how I can weed out the snakes and the opportunists and the wannabes. And I figured it out. Thanks to my new good friend who I need to text tomorrow. Um, he gave me a great idea was to create an NDA because my paid course has an NDA. My paid course has a non-disclosure agreement and a non-compete clause. But we came up with an ironclad NDA in um, non-compete clause for the free course so you can't even get past anything before that, all right? So that being said, if, you were, if you're watching this video and you wanna know about the free course, that is 
the update on the free course okay so like i said i'm gonna put a table of contents in the top of this video so that if you're watching this on the replay to stop your whining and your crying um that's what that is okay now it amazes me that you will spend eight hours laboring to make somebody else rich but you will not spend 60 minutes learning how to become wealthy you will spend eight hours you will spend eight years laboring to make somebody else rich but you refuse to spend 60 minutes to learn how to how to make yourself wealthy you will spend an entire weekend Netflix and chilling, watching The Real Housewives of Atlanta, The Real Housewives of Potomac, The Real Housewives of Long Beach, California. You will watch all of them be successful, but not you would do a marathon for six hours on a weekend, but not take 60 seconds for yourself. OK, if you are offended, good. I hope you are offended. I hope you're offended enough to change. OK, so let's do a temperature check so let's do this so if you are watching this on the replay and and i want you to participate even if you as if you're watching live i want you to make a mind muscle connection with this content okay so um i see your comments i'm gonna get to that but i want i'm in teaching mode right now so let's do a temperature check if you have student loans and you have ish if you have student loans i want you to say got them Two words got them. Even if you're watching this on the replay, I want you to participate. I want you to interact with me. OK, I want you to say got them. If you have student loans, I want you to say got them. If you don't have student loans and um, I still want you to participate and I want you to say free and clear those three words. If you have student loans, I want you to say got them. If you are free and clear, I want you to say free and clear. That's going to let me know what I'm teaching on. So if I'm wanting to teach on student loans, but most of you guys don't have student loans, then I'm not going to teach on it tonight. That's that's futile. But if you're free and clear and you don't have them, we can teach you. I can talk about teaching on something else. So let's see. Thank you guys so much for participating. All right. Thank you so much for participating. Somebody said preach. I appreciate you so much for that. Let's go ahead and look at my phone because I'm a grown man and sometimes my eyes play tricks on me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see who is all participating all right so um thank you so much for participating so um timothy hall says preach i appreciate you sir all right um adam says got them ray um late ray says got them travis says um got them erica says got them beverly says got them all right mark says got them dk says got them spirit queen tv says got them johnson says got them kendall says got them all right um Prick King says got them. Um, Talia says got them. Julian says got them. Okay. So it looks like most people have them. Raquel, Raquel gave me a sad face. All right. Young um, Before Rich says free and clear. Awesome stuff. Um, Aaliyah says got them. All right. So most of you guys say you have them. Okay. Awesome. Most of you guys are, you have them. Thank you so much for participating as well. I really appreciate you. All right. Robert says he's free and clear, but thank you so much for participating. OK, so for everybody that says got them, there's a total of 67 of you guys watching. OK, so if you guys got them. All right. I want you to do me a big favor. All right. I want you to hit that share button right now. I want you to share. OK, just hit the share button right now because your cost of admission is your participation. If you have student loans, that means that you know somebody else that has student loans. So what I want you to do is I want you to hit the share button right now and I want you to share it on Facebook share it on twitter i want you to share it in a group text i want you to share this with your baby mama with your baby daddy with your auntie with your uncle i want you to share it with your side chick i want you to share it with your side dude i want you to share it with um with your your best friend just share it hit the share button the cost of admission is for you to participate because i'm going to teach you the way there are three ways in which you're the three types of student loans and there are three ways on how you can get them removed and i'm going to teach those to you right now all right so i need for you guys to share this right now now i'm not going to be taking calls live to, tonight i normally go live on fridays and i take phone calls live if we're able to get this video to 500 shares okay that all right now we have 12,000 subscribers we have 12,000 subscribers and the average video that i have has about 2,000 sub um views out of that, if you want another call-in show where I'm taking your calls live, all right, we get this video. And as you guys see, I look at my analytics. Like I said, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I don't do this for play. I do it for pay. You dig what I'm saying? I'm a CEO in real life. I just don't play one on YouTube. <laughs> so um, 
if we get to 500 shares on this, the next, not this next Friday, because I'll be, um, it's Mother's Day weekend, so I'm flying out. But the Friday after next, when I release the um, course on that live um, podcast, I'll take your calls live. We have one, if we have 500 shares, okay? So we need 500 shares on this video. Like I said, I look at my analytics. It's very important. We have 500 shares. I'm going to take your phone calls live. All right, and, and a lot of people are like, Dean, I don't like the fact that you, I don't like the fact that, that you um, make us participate. Dean, why, I don't, I'll be, I'll be looking at your comments. Now, I, even though I'm a CEO and I'm busy, I look at a lot of my comments. Like I said, majority of my content that I do is based off of you guys. And there's a lot of trolls and a lot of haters. And people say, I don't like the fact that you make us participate. Okay, so let's do this. You pay me $250 an hour for the time that I spend with you. Because that's how much I charge. That's how much I bill. And I have and I have people waiting. I have consultations waiting to meet me. And I'm not saying this to boast or brag. I'm not saying this to impress you, but to impress upon you that this isn't a regular gamers YouTube channel. This is not a YouTube channel where I'm doing reactions. This is not a YouTube channel where I'm doing fashion over vlogs. This is not a YouTube channel where I'm doing um, pop culture. Even though I do from time to time when I do my conscious commentary, this is not a YouTube channel where I do makeup tutorials. I am teaching you how to become wealthy, how to be successful, and how you can be wise. That's what I do. That's what I'm teaching you on, okay? So I know that I'm ranting and I know I'm going off on a rant. And so, like I said, I apologize for the people who have, don't have the, the time, um, um, the time to, to, to get sit through this and they don't have the attention span. So I'm going to do the best that I can tonight. Once I'm laying in the bed, winding down, I'm going to create a table of contents at the top of this video. So I'm going to say rant moment. I'm going to say I'm going to get to the meat and the potatoes of it. OK, so that being said, that is what this channel is. You see the name of the channel, Money Making Motivation. That is everything on this channel. It's my lifestyle. I do CEO lifestyle. I do my lifestyle vlogs. But this is about making money. And if you are interested in making money, and I know you might think I'm handsome, and I know you might think I'm articulate, and I know you think that I'm black and I stay woke, which I am, the purpose for this is to help you make money. 99.9% .9 of every last one of my titles, my texts, my tag, and my description is on how to make money, okay? So if that is not your interest, do me a huge favor and unsubscribe and leave and go find some cat videos, go find a walk away video or a twerking video, go find some softcore porn or find whatever it is that you want and let the kings and queens reign in the energy of peace and prosperity as we take ourselves to that millionaire status, to that multimillionaire status, and to that billionaire status. All right, are you guys ready to go? So thank you guys so much for that. So let's get into it. So most of you guys said that you guys have um, student loans. All right. So I'm going to teach about student loans. Now, all of you guys that said student loans, I wanted you to share this. Please, like I said, share this on your Facebook, share it on your on your Twitter. If you if you don't have those and you have Instagram, take a screenshot and at me in the comments. I want to see you guys participate. The cost of admission is your participation. All right. So. There are two types of student loans. Now, let's do a temperature check. Like I said, I already know this video is going to be about an hour. It's going to be about an hour. I ain't hooking up with, um, I ain't linking up with old girl. I need to text her right now and tell her that I am not hanging out tonight. Oh, here she go right here. Hey, never heard back from you. All right. All right. So, all right. Now, there are two types of student loans. Most people don't know this, okay? So, there are two types of student loans. One type of student loan is a um, federal student loan or government-backed student loan. And the second type of student loan is a private student loan, okay? So, most student loans that are backed by the government, you know, they have the, um, they have the Sally Mae loan. And then the other type of student loans are private loans. So, if you knew that, I want you to say knew that. If you did not know that, I want you to say didn't know. Two words. Even if you're watching this on the replay, like I said, I want you to make a mind-muscle connection with this content. 
um, psychology says that if you're learning something and you write something down and you see, and even though you're not, you can't physically write it down, but you can type it, it helps your cognitive um, dissonance and it allows you to remember and recall things. Okay. Repetition is the mother of all learning. And by you, by me saying it and you hearing it and you seeing it, those are three ways that will help your cognitive dissonance so that you can recall this information. Okay. So I want you to repeat this. I want you to, to even on the replay, participate as if you're watching live. And if you are watching on the replay, and you have not subscribed, subscribe and hit the bell so the next time we're live, you can participate as well, all right? So let's go ahead and see everybody that, um, let's see everybody that's participating. Thank you so much for participating, guys. Make sure my volume is down, all right? So, all right, so thank you so much for participating. Let's see who's all in the business, in the building, okay? So Adam says knew that, um, Travis says knew that. Thank you for participating. Ray says he knew that. Okay, awesome. Thank you for participating. All right, Dollar Bill says he knew that. Thank you for participating. All right, Print King says that he didn't know. Thank you so much for participating, Print Kings. Okay, um, all right, Trayvon says he got them and he knew that. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for participating. Um, all right, so Timothy Hall says, what if Sally Mae sold my loan to um, Naver, Navient? That's a very good question. We're going to I'm going to answer that question for you in a minute, Timothy. All right. So um, Kendall said, did it know that? OK, awesome. Thank you so much for participating. Um, Joseph says, knew that. Let's get to the meat. All right, Joseph, we are um, getting to the meat right now, sir. This is a live video, Joseph. Joseph um, Fruguera, the entire video is the meat because I am teaching in a live lecture, Joseph. So thank you so much for watching and participating. This is the meat. The entire video is the meat. Okay. That's what this is, Joseph. Okay, Joseph. All right. Um, DK say that he knew that. All right. Um, Tariq L. Elion says didn't know. So there are two types of student loans. There are the government student loans, the federally backed student loans, and then there are the private student loans. The reason why I need to know the temperature check is because it lets me know what I need to teach on. So that's that. Now, most of you guys, do you know, most of you guys said that you knew that a lot of you guys have Sally Mae loans. Someone even asked what happens if Sally Mae sells the loan. Now, there are three ways, okay? There are three ways in which you're able to get your student loans removed, all right? And I'm gonna teach you the three ways. I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Now, the very first way is this. If you have a federal student loan, if you have a federally backed student loan, the first way that I'm gonna tell you, which is the fastest way and the easiest way, it will not work for you, all right? It will not work for you. Now, um, Joseph wanted me to get to the meat and potatoes. So before I get to the meat and potatoes, I need to do one last thing, Joseph, and everybody else. All right, like I said, I'm not new to this, I'm true to this, I don't do this for play, I do this for profit, okay? 20 years of experience in banking and finance and consulting, I have to do this. All the information that I am providing for you is not to be used to commit any fraud, it is not to be used to profit off of, it is not to be used It is not to be used. Um, sorry about that, guys. Somebody was FaceTiming me. It is not to be used um, for any profit. It is not to be used to commit fraud. It is not to be used um, for um, to to profit off this intellectual property. This is used for education and entertainment purposes only. I am not. I repeat, I am not encouraging you to defraud the um, federal government and I am not encouraging you to commit any illegal act or any fraud to any lending institution. I need for you, okay, to agree, even if you're watching this on the replay, I promise to Jehovah God, I will not move forward. Let's see where we at, because listen, you guys will not, you will not, um, you will not Warren Valentine, me, the devil is a lie. Like I said, I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. You will not um, Ephraim Taylor, me, the devil is a lie. These are individuals that teach and talk publicly on sensitive things. And there's only so much things that they could talk about and they you, you will not do that. So if you understand that, okay, 
that this information is not to be used to defraud the government or to defraud any legal lending institution and that this information um, is only for education and entertainment purposes, but are not instructions to do anything Ill illegal or unlawful. Say I agree. OK, say I agree. There is a total of 92 of you guys that are watching right now. I need all 92 of you. And like I said, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I look at my live analytics. OK, I need all 92 of you guys right now to say I agree. You must agree to the terms and the conditions. OK, you must agree. If you want me to teach this to you, you must say I agree. All right. You must do that. I am going to sit back and watch all 92 of you guys. Here we go. I'm sitting back and watching all 92 of you guys. Thank you for participating. You must agree. You have to understand that you agree. Even if you're watching this on the replay, I need for you to say, I agree. By <laughs> you will not Ephraim Taylor me. You will not Warren Ballantyne me. No, 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 no. Because somebody gonna do something wrong, dumb, and stupid. We have 12,000 subscribers. And some, some of my videos have 40,000 views. You will not do that to me. This is, I'm not, if you guys are gonna teach, if I'm gonna teach in a public forum, in a public, public setting, you guys have to agree to this. Now, after this mile point, after this point, after this mile marker in this video, Joseph and everybody else that are impatient but is asking and sitting for my information, you're supposed to be grateful and thankful that, I'm, that you're here instead of complaining and trying to rush me. I might take another 45 minutes and I just might do that, Joseph and everybody else. Um, but nevertheless, um, any time after this point by you um, watching this video, by you participating in this video, you are opting into the terms and conditions of this video. So I need for you to agree. And any point after this, you are agreeing to the terms and conditions of this video. All right. So that being said. The very first thing, there are three things, there are three ways in which you're able to get rid of student loans. The first way that I'm going to teach you how to get rid of your student loans is the fastest and the quickest way, but it does not work for federal student loans. The first thing is to file bankruptcy. Now, if you have a, um, if you have a um, private student loan by a private institution like Strayer University or or um, Phoenix, who else, um, or name, what are some of the private institutions? Like, what's the name of the guy that is like, um, what is the name of the guy that says things like, um, you're not doing anything right now, get up off the couch, go, what's, what's the name of that? Um, Everest College, is that Everest? What's another one, like any technical college, any technical institution, a lot of those trade schools, I listen to a lot of iHeartMedia, and I think on iHeartMedia, there's a private um, technical college right now for mechanics and for um, airlines that are really pushing those. Those type of student loans can all be bankruptable. You can bankrupt any of those, okay? Um, and the type of bankruptcy that you need to do is a Chapter 7. So let's see exactly who we are. So let's see. Somebody says, huh? Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure what that hunt that hunt was that hunt was, but let's see and make sure that you guys understand me. So, name some of the colleges that um that have like the private. What are the private colleges? Um, some of the private um, so yeah, like um, Plymont Capital, Plymont Capital, um, Neviant. Timothy says Neviant. All right, who else? Um. Yes, Timothy, this is a live contract. DeVry, yes, DeVry is another good one. DeVry is a very good one. Everest College, Phoenix College, that's very good. Monroe College, okay, yeah, Monroe College is very good. No, that's not chocolate scotch that I'm drinking. Um, Timothy, it's a sweet tea. <laughs> I wouldn't be drinking. I wouldn't be drinking scotch out of this. It looks like scotch, but no, I wouldn't be drinking. I have. A, I have a little. I have a little shooter. <laughs> no. Um, Strayer University. That's a good one. Um, Strayer University is good. 
I'm Sanford Brown. My computer career is a very good one. Yes, my computer career. Capella University. Yes, Capella University is good. These are all types of student loans that can be bankruptable. If you do not, if you have a private student loan, okay, and you're playing, you're making private payments, okay. Now I'm telling you that three ways. I'm telling you three ways, and the first way is through bankruptcy. Now, I am not an advocate for bankruptcy. You can um, bounce back from a bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is a great fix for individuals that are over leveraged. They cannot see their way, their way out. If they have legal issues, um, bankruptcy is a very good way. If you have more debt, um, like if you have a lot of student loans, if you have a lot of um, 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 marital debt, if you have a lot of um, credit cards, um, repossessions, a lot of those type of things, collections, those again, I suggest you don't anything under $50,000 you work with. This is just my opinion. Anything under $50,000 you work with. If you combine all of those things together and they're above $50,000, then, then maybe bankruptcy is a good option for you, okay? I, but I am not a big advocate for it because you're going to have to get down and stay down. You're going to have to sit down somewhere for around seven years, okay? You can um, do other things, you know what I'm saying? But it depends on where you are on your, on your journey for wealth building. If you're like Donald Trump, his business has filed bankruptcy, I think 11 times, but in his journey of, um, in his journey of wealth building, he, the, his, the person never filed bankruptcy, but his business filed bankruptcy. That's thing number one. Second thing is if you already own your home and you're at the maintaining stage of life or you're in the set and you're in the, um, you're not in the building stage. If you're in the maintaining stage, you already have the cars you want. You already have the house you want. You're cool. You're just trying to maintain. Bankruptcy is a good option for you. But if you're in the building stages, uh, bankruptcy is not the best option for you. That is my advice, okay, as a business consultant, all right? Now, the first way is bankruptcy. Now, what type of bankruptcy? There are two types of bankruptcies, okay? There's a chapter seven bankruptcy and there's a chapter 13 bankruptcy, okay? A chapter seven bankruptcy is where you wipe things out completely. That's a brand new, fresh start. You wipe things off completely. I have a client that recently um, went through a chapter seven bankruptcy. Right now, he has close to $75,000 in business credit that's completely separate from his personal credit. Just got approved today for another, was it $6,000 or $3,000? We were just in the private Facebook group talking about this. I want to see what he got approved for. And he might be watching right now. I ain't even checked to see. Uh, Scott, are you watching? Scott, let me know if you're watching. Because I know you were just in the private Facebook group in our live session. And I just saw that recent approval. I want to see what you just got approved for. I think he had 75000 now. So that being said, if you're really building a business and you're building business that's completely separate from your personal credit, then um, where's Scott at? Um, and his name on here is the, um, passive income trucker. That's Scott's name. Where was it? Where was it? Uh, I just saw your approval, Scott. I'm looking for it. Here you go. <sighs> Where did it go? I'm going to share your approval on Instagram too. Where did it go? It was 3,000, not 6,000, 3,000. Okay. Are you in here, Scott? Perfect, I'm trouble. Yes, hit the like button and the share button. Thank you very much for that. Hit the like button and the share button. Okay. All right, we have 92 people watching. I need, we need 92 thumb. Well, we have three thumbs down. So we have 92 people watching. We need 80, um, we need at least 89 thumbs um up and 89 shares 89 thumbs up and 89 shares okay so um nevertheless um i'm not a big fan of that um so um gam tesco says isn't filing bankruptcy especially chapter seven bad that's a very good question gam it is it is specific to your needs let me give you an example so gam if I am allergic, like for instance, I'm allergic to, to um, penicillin, right? If I take penicillin gam, it's bad for me. I could possibly die. 
But if somebody else needs penicillin and they take it, for them, it's good. Oftentimes, when we think about credit, there's no such thing as good or bad. It's a prescription, which is why it's difficult for you to teach publicly, which is the reason why people like Ephraim Taylor and people like um, Warren Ballantyne, they got in trouble because they didn't do the stuff that I did. And they're not as detailed as I am. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I understand what I'm saying. So that being said, I am not going to allow you guys entertainment to cause me to get in trouble as a professional. So that being said, I and, and you might have caught you might have kind of came in from um, in halfway point. But I said that I personally don't believe that it's good to file bankruptcy. I said that I personally am not a fan of it. I said, however, if all of your bills and all of your accumulation is over fifty thousand dollars, then that might be a good option for you. But I could never say blanketly anything is good or bad. That is just how it is. Another prime example. I'm on my weight loss journey. I cannot eat carbs. However, somebody else that might be skinny as a stick who can't gain weight to save their life, they need to eat carbs. I saw this girl on YouTube. Um, she was talking about her caloric intake is thirty five hundred dollars. I mean, thirty five hundred calories a day. Her caloric intake is thirty five hundred a day. My caloric intake needs to be at a thousand a day. You see what I'm saying? So everybody's situation is different. And the same way that everybody car is different, same reason why custom made suits are different. The exact same thing when it comes to business development and it comes to credit development. And that's one of the reasons why it irritates the black off of my back when people who are not trained and people who do not understand um, the rules of banking and finance and they go and they try to teach this without the years of experience to understand the ins and outs and outs and ends, which is the reason why it does bother me so much. So your information has to be tailor made specifically for you. It cannot be, there's no blankets. The only blanket things there is, is to buy land because God ain't making no more of it and to save your money and to start a business. Those are the only three universal things that I will say is universal for everybody else. Now, the specificity and practicality of how you um, buy land, the specificity and the practicality of how you're going to um, create and start a business, the specificity, the practicality and the execution of how you're going to save your money. That is tailor made for you. OK, so I said all of that to say that you guys understand that your specific um, solution needs to be prescribed. I need all of you guys right now to say prescribed. I need for you guys to understand that everything is specific for you. A lot of you guys I understand are not in the position to pay me $150 an hour, $250 an hour. Most of you guys are not in that position. So if you're not in that position, that means you're going to have to sit through these long videos, stop whining, use the spirit of gratitude because the universe has allowed me to give you guys this game for free and that your time is your most valuable asset because you ain't got no other asset besides your time so that you can utilize it to get those assets. So that being said, you have to try to put together the bits and pieces that you can and also save up for a month, two months to get that consultation that you might need or enroll into a course so you can get the information that you might need. So I need for all of you guys to say prescribe because I have had so many and I see in the comments People will do just like that gentleman did or the young lady did. I don't know. It's just an orange circle. And they'll say, is it this bad? Or did you say this? Or I, I listen to the phone calls and people will say, well, Dean said this and Dean said that. And in my mind, I'm like, if I was talking to a woman and I say that, you know, all right, you need to get these tampons. Why on earth would a guy say, well, Dean said I need to get tampons? No, because it's not specifically for you. And people say things like that all the time. People say, well, Dean said, no, I was talking specifically to that person at the time. And then I'll say things that are universal when I say things that are universal. I understand that a lot of people want to get that one on one time. That's why we need to get this to 500 shares. All right. So the next time I'm live on Fridays, I could take your calls and or schedule that one on one time with me when you do your consultations so that you can get your specific answer. So I need for all of you guys to understand and say prescribed, okay? All right, I want you to say prescribed. So somebody said that they did a chapter seven bankruptcy. Who was that that said that they did a chapter seven bankruptcy? Um, 
I'm looking good. Thank you so very much for that. Um, declare too. I've dropped a couple pounds. I got I got 30 more to go for the TV show. I got 30 more to go for the TV show. Um, we start filming in September. Th I'm looking thinner and thinner. Thank you so much for that, Alex Express. I appreciate you. All right. All right. Glam says, got it, bro. Thanks for the explanation. You're very, very welcome. I'm Gam Tresco. I appreciate you. Yes, prescribe, prescribe. Thank you so much for participating. All right. So um, the PT um, passive income trucker, Scott Davies, he's the, that's the client of mine. He says that um, 4K was um, the new car. The new car that you just got was 4K. Um, he has 60,000. Let's see if I can find him. Passive income trucker. Where you go? I can't. I think I, I lost you. But passive income trucker was the, who I was just talking about. And he's established 65K in business credit and 24K in personal credit since his bankruptcy, um, since he's been enrolled into my course. All right. Um, so most of you guys said prescribe. Awesome. You got it. Prescribe, prescribe, prescribe. Awesome. Got it. Prescribe. Okay. Prescribe. So you guys understand that it is prescribed. So, all right. Now, bankruptcy is the fastest and easy way to do it for um for um, private student loans. Now, if you are not, and if you do not want to do bankruptcy, okay, if you don't want to do bankruptcy, and if you want to still get your um, student loans, um, your private student loans taken away, you can still possibly get them taken away, right? Now, you guys remember the disclaimer that I said. Now, the second way that you can get your student loans. And right now we're just talking about private student loans. We're not talking about government student loans. I'm gonna save that for the end, okay? But right now for your private student loans, the second way is, the first way, the fastest, easiest way is bankruptcy. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, boom, it's taken care of. The second way, if you don't wanna do that, and this is the way that I prefer to do it, is to actually dispute them. You can dispute them under the 609 Act. All right, so let me do some. Let me do a temperature check. If you guys understand the 609 Act, and a lot of you guys might, and you might not. So let's, let me let me explain. Do you guys understand? So if you know what the 609 Act is, I want you to say I know. If you don't know what the 609 Act is, I want you to say don't know. This is important because if most of you guys know what it is, I won't take the time to reteach it. But if you don't know what it is, then I need to take the time to teach it, to explain to explain what the 609 Act is. So thank you guys so much for participating. <sighs> let's see. Thank you guys so much for participating. So let's see. Do you guys know what the 609 Act is? All right. So um, Trayvon says he knows. Alex Express says that he knows. Adam Roseman says don't know. Talisha says don't know. Um, Kendall says, I don't understand the 609 Act. Ray says, don't know. Erica says, don't know. Um, Latroy says, don't know. Um, Achillian says, I know. Robert says, I know. Timothy says, I know. Jody says, I don't know. All right, Gam says, don't know the 609 Act. Spirit Queen TV says, don't know. All right, 18 wheeler shouting. Eight, that's supposed to be S H A W T Y instead of shorty. 18 wheeler shouting. <laughs> 18 wheeler shouting says that I don't know um, this area. You don't know that area code? <laughs> it's not an area code, okay? It's a credit code, it's a legal code. All right, um, Big the Realist says that um, he don't know. <laughs> okay, so most of you guys don't know what it is. That was funny to me. All right, so um, Alvina Flower said that you know because of the course. Well, I'm glad, Alvina, that you enrolled into the course and you know what it is. I'm very, very glad that you know what it is. Okay, so what the 609 Act, what most people don't realize is that um, the credit companies, all right, the credit companies and the credit agencies, um, when they first came about, they used to report erroneous, fraudulent things to your credit report. Most of you guys that don't know this, <laughs> the, the credit bureaus used to pay their employees commission or bonuses for finding out dirt on you. 
<laughs> the credit bureaus used to pay their employees commissions for finding out if you were having an affair, for finding out if you were homosexual, for finding out if you had um, kids out of wedlock. And they used to report that to the credit bureaus. And so what happened is just like any industry, any regulation that needs to come down, people used to report fraudulent things on people without any verification of doing so. Did you guys know that if you did not know that, I want you to say OMG, if you never knew that. If you knew that, I want you to say LOL, okay? Uh, I write three letters. If you knew that, I want you to say OMG. If you, if you didn't know that, I want you to say OMG. If you did know that, I want you to say LOL. And if you're watching this, even if you're watching this on the replay, two things. One, I want you to say OMG and make sure that you share this with somebody. So the same way that I just taught you something, I want you to share the wealth and, tip and, and share it with somebody else on Facebook, share it with Twitter, share it on Instagram, take a screenshot and tag me on, on um, Instagram. All right. If you didn't know that, I want you to say OMG. If you did know that, I want you to say LOL. All right. Even if you're watching this on the replay. All right. All right. So, um, Let's be um, specific um, on when the 609 Act was enacted. Um, I have, in my course, in our online course, I teach specifically. Um, um, I teach specifically in detail of when the 609 Act was enacted, and I break it down and I make it. Um, I make it very plain and clear. The reason why that's important is because I'm teaching you. I teach you guys how to completely remove things off of your credit report because of the 609 Act, okay? Oh, man. So the 609 Act is actually the slang for it, okay? So I'm going to give you, it's actually a code, which is code 609, okay? So um, it's code 609. The, um, I'm going to give you guys sp the specifics. Now, the reason why I have to give you specifics now in my course, I go into grave detail showing you how to create letters and write letters so that you can have items removed according to the 609 Act. I don't teach that publicly and I show this heck ain't teaching it on a free course. OK, so I'm just being very candid with you. I teach you certain things, but when it comes down to the legalese and the specificity of how to write these things, that has to be behind closed doors. You have to be bought in. You have to have a paper trail. You have to have an IT, I mean, an um, IP um, trail on file. I need a signed um, affidavit if I'm going to teach that to you. I'm just being very candid with you. I ain't going to lie to you, make it sound fly to you. So yes, the course that I'm going to give you will give you some great free information, but at the same time, when we talk about how I'm telling you what to do, but if you, when I'm talking about how to do that, that's in our 720 FICO coaching. In our 720 FICO coaching, we spell it all the way out for you. I give you codes, the templates, and all that stuff. I am just going to give it to you 100% straight. But um, um, give me one moment. I'm trying to see who emailed me and texted me so late at night. It really wasn't a client that enrolled into the course. So the 609 Act, so most of you guys saying OMG. You shared this live. Thank you so much for sharing that. I see all these OMGs. Okay. All right. So, so um, the 609 Act is the slang for it, but what 609 stands for is the Fair Credit Reporting Act or the FCRA. All right. It stands for the FCRA. It's the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Um, and the Fair Credit Reporting Act was enacted. Um, the Fair Credit Reporting Act was acted, was enacted in 1681. All right. So in 1681 um, was when the um, FCRA um, was actually enacted. OK, because what companies used to do, like I said, the credit reporting companies, what they used to do was they used to pay commission. They used to pay bonuses for finding out um, fraudulent information. Um, it was actually created in Congress in 1681, but it actually hit the streets in 1970. 
The reason why that is very key and very vital, especially to the African-American community, is because in the 70s is when a lot of us started to, and I say a lot of us, even though I wasn't born in the 70s, but in the 70s was when um, we as a community started to see a lot of the benefits of um, a lot of benefits of the civil rights movement. Now, this is just based on my opinion. All right. So the reason why this is very vital and is very good is because back then, before 19, before, um, yeah, before 19, um, before 1981, um, before 1981, um, it would be on your credit report that you were a Negro. It would be on your credit report that you were a colored. It would be on your credit report the area that you lived in. That would be on your credit report. But after 1970, when we started to really see a lot of the benefits of the civil rights movement, that no longer shows up. Now, I can do, and I'm going to go in grave detail later on about breaking that down for african American. I'm going to have uh, something specific for that. But nevertheless, um, <clears throat> for right now, so uh, so 609 is slang for the FCRA, which stands for the F, um, stands for the FDCRA, which stands for the um, the F. There's two of them. There's the FCRA, which stands for the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and the other one is the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. So it's the FCRA and it's the FDCPA. Completely different. So I'm talking about specifically the FCRA. This is the second way that you're able to get your student loans removed. The FCRA basically says that by law, you as a debtor has the right to get validation and proof that you owe the debts that are being reported against you. All right. There is a certain triage. There's a certain level. There's a total of three or four different letters you have to send out in order how you send them out, the way you send them out in order for you to activate this act. We you you can get bankruptcies removed. You can get student loans removed. You can get foreclosures removed. You can get um, medical bills removed. You can get anything removed with the FCRA with the Fair Credit Reporting Act, They're especially private student loans. Let me tell you the reason why, all right? Now remember the companies that we named, all right? And let's see if you're part of these individuals. All of the companies that we named, a lot of those companies have gone out of business. A lot of those companies have gone out of business and they have sold the debt to a third party collection agency. The third party collection agency should, if you get a call, from a third party collection agency about your student loan, you should do backflips because the chances of you getting them removed under the FCRA goes up by 70%. If they sell it to a third party, third party, a fourth party, if it's gone to a collection agency and then they sell it to another collection agency, you have a 99.9 .9 chance of getting that student loan completely removed. Okay, so let's do a temperature check. If you have had, if you, if, and we can just be honest and transparent, guys, because there's nobody but us here, it's nothing but family. If you have a student loan that has gone to the collection agency, if you had student loans that's gone to third party collection agencies, I want you to report, I want you to say, yay, Y-A-Y, -Y, all right? If you have some that are reporting, okay, and, and they are going to a third party reporting agency, I want you to say, yay, why a why? Even if you're watching this on the replay, I want you to participate with me as if you're watching live. I want you to say, yay, because everybody that has that, they have the chance, a higher chance of it being removed without doing a, um, a bankruptcy. Let's do a temperature check. I know it's late guys. I know I've been going for an hour already. I want you to say, yay. I want you to say, yay. <sighs> All right. Um, so Travis says, mine's still open. All right. Um, P2 says, yay. Spirit Queen TV says, yay. Samson says, yay. All right. So only three of you guys. I know, like I said, I know it's late, guys. So I know you guys are rocking with me. It's late. We have a, a hundred people watching me live. 
we have 77 thumbs up. That's all 77, all 90 some up. I mean, 100 of you guys hit that thumbs up button. The more you guys participate, the more people grow. All right. All right, Mr. B says, yay, I think. Um, Ford says, yay. All right, big, um, the realist says, yay, but not student loans. Yes, so if it's third party, you have a higher chance under the FCRA. That's correct. All right, it started with higher learning. Now it's gone to a third party, so say yay. That's correct. That's, that's correct. Timothy says yay. Okay, awesome. So even if you guys are watching on the replay, I want you to say participate. And you guys can see the comments right here. And you can also see the comments below by hitting the live chat button. So the cool thing is now you can do the live chat. Um, the cool thing is now you can do the live chat in um, on the replay. So um, by you guys um, utilizing your rights under the FCRA, um, you now have the right to validate the debt. Now, the specificity on how you do it, I can't do that live. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just, I can't do that. Um, but I'm going to tell you the, 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 the a very good amount of information on how you do it. Um, basically, what you're doing is under the FCRA, it basically states that a, a creditor cannot report anything on your credit report without going through the proper chain of of title and command um, showing that they have the proof they have to do what's called validate the debt okay they don't have to verify the debt but they have to validate the debt okay now I know it's late guys I know it is and I know you guys are tired I'm tired too I'm gonna hit these last two points and I'm gonna be out of the way because I'm tired um, but you have to have to validate the debt not verify the debt let me explain what I mean by that have any of you guys ever had a collection agency call you and say, I need, and, and they say, and you say, hey, uh, I need proof of this debt. I need proof that I owe this. And they'll send you an itemization or they'll send you a screenshot of their, of their computer or they'll send you, um, they'll send you um, a, a memo or they'll send you something along those lines to say, this is a breakdown of what you owe. This is, you know, your quote unquote account. There is verification, but that is not validation. Hear what I'm saying? Under the FCRA, and these words mean things. It's very, very important, okay? Because words mean things. You got to understand, like when you're talking about legal jargon, you have to use certain words because words mean things. Remember when I made you guys agree to, to um, I say that this is for education and entertainment purposes only. Words mean things, okay? So when you do a declaration, when you do when you decree a thing, it shall be established. So you have to, words mean things. So if a company tries to verify the debt, verification is not good enough under the 609 Act. Verification is not good enough under the FCRA. It's very important because a lot of companies will try to play games with you, especially the African Okay. All right. Um, a lot of um, people, especially in the African American community, we will be we will be bamboozled. We will be hoodwinked. We will be run astray. We will be run amok because we don't know. The number one best-selling book of all times when it comes to business development says that my people perish for what lack of what knowledge and so because we do not know we are we we agree to things and we allow things to to um we allow people to trick us we allow people to take advantage of us and that's why i'm called to teach you so that you can be empowered and educated so that you won't allow that to happen to you so under the fcra they have to validate not verify and a lot of times when clients and, and people in my inbox say, well, Dean, I tried to dispute it. I did a dispute. And when I did the dispute, they came back with the itemization. And then I, ca and then I came up with the repayment plan. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's a trick. It's, it's, a, 52, it's a 52 fake out. I show you how to, how to evoke your rights under the FCRA in the 720 FICO culture. Um, but basically... What you have to do is there's certain letters, there's certain legalese, there's certain jargon you have to say so that they will understand that this is not validation. 
it needs to be taken off your off your credit. So the second thing is under the FCRA, which is a validation. If they basically, if you play your cards right and you make your next move your best move, you'll be able to in 90 days roughly have that taken off your credit report. If they and if that's if that's if they um, don't do what they're supposed to do in 90 days. Oftentimes, you can get it taken off in um, 45 to 60 days, but 90 days at the latest. You can get bankruptcies, you can get foreclosures, you can get student loans, you can get apartment complexes, all of that stuff, you can get it taken off. And there's a really cool trick that I teach in the 720 FICO coaching that there's no way in the world I could teach publicly on how you can speed up that process to where you can have it 45 days. You know what I'm saying? If you do that, that one trick, and all of my clients, you guys know what that is when I talk about that freeze that sub-zero freeze you know what i'm saying sub-zero for mortal kombat so all of my clients that's enrolled in the course you guys know what that freeze is just shut down everything that's one of my i think that that's what's one of the most valuable things that i've ever learned and i when we were in um the mortgage industry is when i discovered that tactic because a lot of times people score needed to jump like 10 points just so they can get approved for a loan we have them do that that I teach in 725 code coaching, score jumps up, stuff fall off, 45 days, they get their house, I get my commission, it's a win-win situation. Um, everybody's happy. So that's the third, that's the second way, okay? So the first way is for you to um, do um, a, for, uh, a bankruptcy. Um, the second way is for you to um, do the um, FCRA, invoke the 609 Act. And the third way, it's to do a refinance and a reconsolidation. Um, you can actually refinance and re and um, re um, consolidate or consolidate your student loans. All right. Um, you can actually put your student loans in a forbearance even more. Now, in the course that I'm going to teach this government agency, when you have a government government loan, you can actually have your your loan, your, your student loan refinanced and based on your income, your repayment will be based on your income. So um, you can go through the program. Now, there are fees involved with that. Um, I want to say the fee might be around three seventy five, dollars maybe four fifty. I have to go back and double check. But if you pay that fee, then what you're able to do is they can refinance um, your, your student loan, reconsolidate, they can consolidate everything into one payment. And the cool thing about it is if you play your cards right, and I'm going to teach this in the free course, okay? The free course I'm teaching this method. Um, if you play your cards right, you can have it to where you don't have any student loan payment and every single month it will show up as paid as agreed and all of your old student loan debt will be wiped out. If you play your cards right, that's if you have a government student loan. Now, if you have a private student loan, you can do the exact same thing. You can consolidate, okay? Now remember that, so, okay, so let's do a temperature check. So everything that I just said was for government. So for the government student loan, I want you guys to say government, all right? So for the government student loan, you can consolidate all of your student loans into one loan and have a zero payment by filling out paperwork. If you guys understand that, that is for government. I want you to say government, okay? For government loans, specifically two words, government loan, all right? That is if you have a government student loan, say government loan. I want you guys to participate with me. I know it's late. But I want you guys to participate with me. Government loan. Okay, you guys are giving me some big paragraphs. I'm going to come back and answer some of these things. Uh, all right, so big, uh, the real it says big facts, big facts, big facts. I had to get up and get some money day and night, day and night money bags. Okay, I think they might be doing... Uh, uh, what they call a prank, maybe a lyric prank. All right, so thank you so much for participating. Um, all right, thank you so much, um, Trayvon, for participating. Thank you so much, um, Brian, for participating. Robert, thank you so much for participating. Adam, thank you for participating. 
Um, Murph the Surf, thank you for participating. Kendall, thank you for participating. All right, Big the Realist says, um, government, you in a TV show? Yes, um, thank you so much for participating. Um, Kina, Mina, thank you so much for participating. Latanya, thank you so much for, for participating. Yes. So that is for government. If you have a government student loan, so the government student loan, zero. If you play your cards right, you fill the paperwork out the right way. And in the free course, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. All right. That's if you have a government. All right. Zero payment. Now, if you don't have a government and you have a private student loan and there's not third party and you just had some hard times and um they're still on your head you dig what i'm saying they still say that you have to make those payments if that is your situation you can consolidate them as well now instead of you having a zero payment you can consolidate them into a low interest loan and then you can push them off and you can get a forbearance on those as well just like if you were in school you can get it consolidated to a smaller amount um a smaller amount that you that you have to pay and that's based on your income as well you're never going to have a zero payment with them but what they will do is they will push it off like you were in school and your student loans will be deferred however every month it will not show up as paid as agreed it will just be deferred and the benefit to that is it's not going to go towards your debt to income ratio it's not going to go towards your dti and the benefit to that is that um, it allows you to kind of restructure things as well. Now, when you have a government student loan and you re and you re you consolidate everything and you play your cards right and you have a zero payment, every single month is going to show up as if you're making a, a, a payment, which is what increases your payment history, which is phenomenal. On the private side, um, it will not do that. On the private side, it's just going to sit there as deferred. Um, it's not going to positively affect your credit or negatively affect your credit because it's just going to be there as deferred. You're not going to get any payment history until you start making those payments. But a good thing about it is when you do the consolidation on the student loans, the payments are pretty low. Sometimes they're like $50 or $75. Let's do a temperature check. I got a question. Now, I was lucky enough to where I paid for my education out of pocket. And then I had my um, I had my employer at the time pay for my education. So I have a tremendous amount of certifications. Um, so I'm grateful for that, that I've had a lot of banks pay for my education. And then the first certification and the first thing I had to pay for out of pocket, which was private. But um, I never I never had student loans. So I don't know. I do know that my ex-wife had seventy thousand dollars of student loans and. That was just a lot. And I think the payment was $500 a month. I know because I used to have to pay it. Thank God I ain't got to deal with that no more. <laughs> but I want to know, let's do a temperature check. What are some of you guys' payments for your student loans? Let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. What are some of your payments? How much are you guys paying for your student loans? How much are you supposed to pay? Even let's say that, okay, I'm not paying because they're in deferment. What are you supposed to be paying for your student loans? What should they be? Let's see. What are they supposed to be? Let's do a temperature check and see what they are. All right. So, um, so Adam is ninety dollars. That's good stuff. Um, Raquel says five sixty eight. That's good stuff. All right. Um, Trayvon says you owe fourteen thousand. Never made a payment. All right. Um, big the realist is two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Okay. Uh, paid in full, Alex Express. That's awesome. Congratulations on that, my man. Not sure it's a lot, um, Kendall. For the first thing you need to do, Kendall, if you're ever lost on the map, Kendall, guess what? It says you are here. If you ever use your GPS, it says finding location. You have to know where you are if you want to know where you're going. So it's very important. If you don't know, it's, it's listen, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you something, Kendall, that a judge told me when I was young, dumb, when I was going in and out of jail craziest thing <laughs> my life has been something else when i was a teenager before i got into corporate america before i had the grace of god to get in corporate america thank god i never got a felony oh thank god i never had a felony stupid misdemeanors 
running from the cops and doing the racing and doing a whole bunch of stupid stuff. But um, this judge told me something that changed my life. He said, you want to know what's wrong with you, young black man? He was an older white judge. It's in Fulton County, Georgia, in Alpharetta, Georgia, specifically Fulton County. And he sentenced me to two months in jail because I was running from the cops. Dumb, stupid stuff. Um, and I could have avoided it if I would have paid my tickets or I could have gotten probation or something. I had bench warrants. So that's why he did that because I had like three bench warrants. It was something crazy. And what he said to me, he said, you want to know what's wrong with you, young black man? And um, I said, what, judge? He said, y'all have the ostrich mentality. You know what an ostrich does? I said, what's that? He says that an ostrich, when an ostrich sees a lion, it runs from the, the trouble. It runs from the lion until it can see a hole. And then he sticks his head in the hole and the ostrich thinks that if he can't see it, that the, um, that the trouble, that the danger is gone. But in actuality, the danger doesn't stop coming and the danger becomes a lot more vicious when it hits you. Boom, you go to jail for two months. <laughs> I know what he said to me. Changed my life. Completely changed my life. I dealt with procrastination and I deal with procrastination. But ever since then, I that changed my life. For those two months, I was thinking he was right. Like, what have I procrastinated on? What have I been lackadaisical about? Like, what have I said? Well, if I don't see it, I don't know it. And, I, and now I see everything. I go after everything. I need to see it. Even if, it, if I'm paralyzed by fear or even if I'm overwhelmed by anxiety, I still need to see it so that I can manage it. If I can see it, I can manage it. If I can't see it, it's so dangerous and deadly. So that being said, if you don't know what your credit is, you don't know what your payments are, pick up the phone and call. You knowing is actually liberating and empowering you. You not knowing is like playing Russian roulette. You never know when it's going to go off. All right. So um, that's very, very important. So let's thank you so much for participating. So print says it's 25,000. Mr. AKA blessed for success says, I don't know, but I owe 4,400. They are crazy. $50 a month on a $4,800 um, defaulted loan. All right, Murph the Turf, you're doing very good with that $50 a month. All right, um, Prick King says 50, 55K. Um, Kendall says, wow. Um, Raquel says, that's so true. Kendall says, that is very, very true. Absolutely, it's true. Um, my loan was two was a grant awesome okay so you have a very long name so i'm trying to figure out when your name stops and when your comment starts um uh, mr b i just say mr b um he says your loan was um a two-in-one loan you had a grant um the other was a student loan but you don't know if i'm not sure what that is so rewrite that again mr b all right trayvon says great analogy it was true. And, that's, it's, and it wasn't an analogy that I made up. It was my life. You know what I'm saying? That was that happened to me. And after that was when I started working at MCI Worldcom. I was 17 years old, running from the cops, young and dumb, um, stupid. Then after that, I got myself together. Then I started working at MCI Worldcom. My life was changed. Um, it, it really blessed me. It really, really did. Um, Timothy says, good night, my brother. See you next time. Thank you very much um, for that, Timothy. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you. So, yes. Yeah, so that being said, um, I said all of that to say that it's very important for you guys to know. So even if you do not know what your scores are, if you don't know what your um, your student loans are, it's very important for you to understand and know what they are, guys. So listen. I appreciate you guys so much for watching my um, live. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe and you hit the bell. This is going to be a good night, guys. So I am going to say a good night to you guys, but I'm going to do a quick recap. Listen, the three popular ways, the three most powerful ways for you to deal with student loans is the first way is through bankruptcy. That is my least favorite, but it's the fastest. You file bankruptcy, you got a private student loan, it's completely wiped off. It is what it is. But you're going to have to get down. You're going to have to stay down for seven years. I only suggest, me personally, as a business professional, as a consultant, I only suggest that you do that method for two factors. If one factor is there and the other factor is not there, I don't suggest that you do it. 
I suggest this is just me. The first factor is that you need to be at a maintaining stage of your life, meaning that you are more settled in. You have kids that might be in middle school. You wait for them to get out, get into high school or you have kids in high school. You wait for them to go to college or something along those lines. You already bought your bought your home. Your home is almost paid off or you're in the neighborhood you want to be in. You have a decent car. Your car is not about to break down. Here's the forecast for today. I want to ask him for the forecast. Why you do that to me, Siri? Um, you you have the car that you want. You have, or it's not going to break down. You don't see anything uh, foreseen about to break down. You have about five or ten thousand dollars in the bank somewhere or under your mattress if you're going to file bankruptcy. Something along those lines, and you're just wanting a fresh start. That is when. That's the first caveat. The second caveat is if you have your student loans and medical bills and um, collections and old debt that equals more than 50,000, then those two criteria are the only time I say that you could successfully file bankruptcy to do that. That's the first, that's the first way. All right. If, and only if those are the criteria, in my opinion, I believe. Okay. That's just me. That's thing number one. Thing number two is that un, if this is a private student loan, so remember, this is the private student loan for the first method. You can't do anything with the government student loan with the first method. The second method, the exact same thing with the private student loan. With the private student loan, you have the ability to clear off your credit under the 609 Act. You have the ability to clear off your credit under the FCRA, which stands for the Fair Credit, the Fair credit Reporting Act. Under the FCRA, basically it states that a creditor cannot legally put anything on your credit if they, matter of fact, I'll use this in that list right here. If they um, do not go through the proper channels for, um, for reporting. So say for instance, BMW, all right? So say for instance, BMW says, hey, you owe, us $86,000 for that um, 750 LI. You dig? If they say that you owe, matter of fact, I'm about to do this all the way right because <laughs> this just came in the mail too. Is this the one? Yep, this is the one. All right, this is prime example. Prime example. All right, so if, if BMW comes to you, if BMW says, hey, you owe us $68,000, I mean, um, $86,000 for this BMW, right? If they come to you and say, hey, you owe us, make sure I, I hide this. All right. All right. They say, hey, you owe us $68,000 for that BMW, all right? They come and report that on my credit. And I'm like, hold on. I have the title for this BMW. What do you mean? Like I owe this BMW free and clear. And they come to you and it's like, well, no, -uh, because we say you owe us this 68, I mean, this $86,000 BMW, but I, I have the title for it. So what they have to do is they have to validate the debt to do the validation of going through the proper chain of title saying that we owe this debt. So what they're saying is, well, you know what? Tyrone says that you gave him that you did a loan for um, eighty six thousand dollars for your seven fifty li, and I'm like, no, because I got it free and clear. Here is the paperwork saying that I owe it. This is the title. I owe it free and clear. So what they have to do is now the reason why this is enacted. Remember, because the collection agencies and and the not collection agencies, but the credit reporting agencies used to report erroneous things on people's credit report without going through the proper chain of title. So that situation could be very easy. Like how many of you guys have ever paid something off or how many of you guys have ever had something show up on your credit report that you don't even know who it is. You don't even know what it is. It's because of your address or where you come from or something along those lines. Now let's, let me go back to the chat and let's see if any of you guys have ever had anything on your credit report, um, that was not yours. I want you to say they tried it. Three things. They tried it. If you've ever seen a, if you ever seen like if you are a junior, you see things from your father, 
from a senior, or if you are a senior, you see things from a junior. You might have the same address as somebody else or a similar initials or the same, like, like people like John Smith get a hard time because that's like the most um, common name there is. So if, they, if you ever see anything that is on your credit report, I want you to say they tried it. Because of that, you know, even though they put in the FCRA, the companies are still trying to um, add items and add things on the credit report that is not yours, that do not belong. All right. So I want you to say they tried it. Hold on for a second. Let's see the temperature. I want you to say they tried it. All right. So I see some people saying good night. I know you guys checked out. All right, so um, Alex um, says they tried it. Thank you for participating. Kendall says they tried it. Thank you for participating. Robert says they tried it. Thank you so much for participating. All right, um, they trying it still right now. Um, Osinus Hill, okay. Well, you have to enact your right under the FCRA because these companies are not right. They're, they're not right at all. A lot of times they're not right. So they tried it. All right. Awesome. Alex Express said that you sent the validation letters in. It was removed. Awesome, Alex. That's phenomenal, my man. You you winning. You batting a thousand, Alex. So they tried it. That's good stuff. So that being said, because that still happens, you have to go through the proper chain and title and you and they have to same thing with the student loan. So I said all of that and I use that analogy because, you know, this just came in the mail. not so long ago. Perfect analogy saying that. Um. That's the perfect analogy saying that um, they tried it. You dig what I'm saying? That's like the, the best analogy. So under the FCRA, they have to actually show proof, not verification, not what somebody said, not a printout, not a screenshot, not a receipt, but actual proof. They have to go through the validation process to validate this debt. If they do not go through the process, if you don't use the right jargon or the right lingo or the right language, they can trick you. Do not become bamboozled. Do not be hoodwinked. Do not be run amok. Do not be run astray. Educate yourself. Empower yourself so you can make sure that they, even though they try it, they won't get away with it. OK, so that's the second way. And the third way is to do a, a consolidation. Now, when you have a government student loan, like I said, if you play your cards right and in the free course, I'm going to show you how to play your cards right, because that um, credit course is being sponsored by a government agency. OK, they pay it for it. Um, I'm going to show you guys all the ins and outs and outs and ends, how you're able to get it consolidated into a new loan. And if you do it the right way, have no payment and it will show up as if you're making the payments on time when you have zero payment, when it's a government loan. But if it is a private loan, you can get it consolidated. Like you saw people paying $50 a month, $60 a month. That's what is like. even and I know people are like, well, that's a $5,000 debt. Well, some of those are $50,000, $60,000 debts that are still at that same amount. Now, you're able to do that. They will be showing up as deferred, but that does not positively or negatively affect your credit like the government does, like the government program does. So listen, guys, look, I appreciate you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys for sticking with me. It is late. Oh, this thing went for an hour and a half. You guys saw how long it was when you hit the video. I'm going to do, I'm about to go. I'm tired. Like I said, I'm supposed to hang out. I'm not hanging out. I'm tired. I'm about to go to bed. And I'm going to try to do a table of contents for this video until I fall asleep so that all the people can see the different bullet points in the comment below. If we get, like I said, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I look at my analytics. Like I said, I don't do this for play. I do this for pay. You dig what I'm saying? So um, we get to 500 shares. I have over 12,000 subscribers. My average video gets around 2,500 to 3,000 views is my average video. If we get 500 shares on this video, all right, we already had over 100 people watching tonight. If all 100 of you guys hit that share button, when we, hit, when we go live, all we need is 400 more. Hit that share button. We get the 500 shares. I'm going to answer your calls live before I push the button to go play for the free course. And I'm going to do that not this Friday coming up, but the Friday after that. All right. So we did everything we needed to do with the course. 
we put together the legal jargon and I can't wait to show you guys the legal jargon. I love it. It's so funny. I, I think it play. I, I love it. You guys, oh, I love it. I will, we got to rain down on you with great vengeance and furious anger <laughs> if you violate that um, the NDA and if you violate the um, the non-compete. Uh, if you violate it, we go to rain down on you with furious anger. <laughs> you guys will see and understand what I'm talking about. Listen, the only person stopping you from being successful is you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much for sharing. And I know it's late and you guys were sticking with me. I know it's long and you guys were sticking with me. I speak a blessing over you and your finances, over your household, for the seed that you have sown into your life for education, for the seed that you've sown into your life for empowerment, for the seed that you've sown, for the time that you have sacrificed to invest into yourself. I declare that you receive a hundredfold harvest that you're going to get a hundredfold back, whether that be through job opportunities, whether that be through business opportunities, whether that be through uh, um, a check in the mail, whether that be through an unexpected contract, whether that be through any type of wealth increase, an increase in your real estate, an increase in your net worth, in, this, in your stocks, in your bonds, or whatever it is, an increase in your um, Forex trading, whatever it is, I speak that blessing over you because you positioned yourself to prosper, because you participated in this content, and because you did something to um, to cause the universe to cause positive energy to come back to you, I declare that it comes back to you a hundredfold. Press down, shaking together, and running over shall men return into your bosom. I speak that blessing over you and your finances and your household. Listen, the only person stopping you from being successful is you. If you don't know, learn it. If you have not met them, meet them. If you do not have the discipline, develop the character. Stay woke. Every closed eye ain't sleep and every sleep eye ain't closed. Go get them. Success is waiting for you.